In this demonstration, I'm going to show you Jaguar, the family of frequency hopping radios. Since entering full production, Jaguar has been continuously upgraded to ensure it maintains its lead as the marketing leader in frequency hopping radios. The basis of the Jaguar family is the 5 watt man pack. Control of the radio has been kept as simple as possible. The operator merely has to switch the radio on and select the volume setting he requires. He then has to ensure that he's on the correct channel. Programs are normally downloaded from this fill gun device. Initially, the programs are put into this programmer. The operator can pull all the information, including frequency and hop codes, into this device. They are then transferred into the fill gun, which is taken to individual radios and connected to the front audio socket. Transfer is automatic. And as soon as the operator has shown a green light, he knows that the program has been successfully downloaded. In an emergency, programs can be entered through the front panel. In addition, the operator can select varying output levels and change the mode of operation. The same transceiver is used in vehicular and base station radios. The addition of a vehicle interface unit and amplifier brings the station output up to 50 watts. The transceiver is again used in aircraft fits, where control of the radio is brought up onto a typical aircraft control and display unit. To complete the VHF family, Caracal, the world's only handheld frequency hopping radio. This handheld 1 watt radio incorporates all the facilities of Jaguar, which we will see later. At UHF, the same man-pack radio for ground-to-air and ground-to-ground -ground communications. At the airfield, or on board ship, or in a vehicle, a 50-watt base station. And in the aircraft, a special 15-watt transceiver, and again, controls brought up onto a typical control and display unit. All of the radios can work in the fixed clear mode and are therefore compatible with in-service radios. They all have 16 kilobit white noise encryption and can therefore work in fixed clear, fixed secure or secure hopping modes. In addition, the UHF radios have an AM capability and also monitor international distress channels. And regardless of whether the operator is in the fixed clear, the fixed secure, or the frequency hopping modes, incoming distress signals will be heard. Let us now look at a demonstration of Jaguar in a typical operating scenario. And we'll observe it using the different modes available to the operator and see it defeat an, an enemy EW attack. For the demonstration, the sand coloured radio will be the transmitter. Audio will be played from this tape player. The olive drab radio will be the receiver. And we can listen to what goes on through this commercial speaker. We can observe what's happening with the spectrum analyzer. And this will give us an indication of what the enemy electronic warfare station will be able to, to observe from our transmissions. Later on, we'll introduce a jamming signal from this jamming simulator. All of the radios can work in fixed clear mode. This normally wouldn't be used with Jaguar, but it does give compatibility with in-service radios, such as the PRC-77. If I put the sand-colored radio into transmit, we can observe the signal on the spectrum analyzer screen. Normally the screen would not be as clear as this of course, but for the purposes of demonstration we've rem removed all the outside interference. The enemy can see you quite clearly even in a busy spectrum and in the clear mode he will be able to monitor and gain information from your radio net. 
In addition, he will be able to direction find your location and place the locations of your headquarters through gaining information in this way. All of the radios have inbuilt digital encryption. To enter the encrypted mode, the operator merely has to select Fix Secure. The enemy now only receives white noise. But he can still see you in the spectrum. He can use that information to direct and find you. And should he wish, he can disrupt your communications by jamming your signals. If we switch the simulator on, you will see that the jamming signal is of immense proportions. At the peak of the wanted signal, the jammer is some 40 dBs higher in amplitude. The Jaguar net, of course, working in the secure mode, is now under threat from the jammer, and communications are lost. A normal fixed channel radio would now have only one option, and that would be to change frequency or channel. Using the pre-programmed facilities of Jaguar, we can move up the frequency band. The net is re-established, but is still under threat from the enemy jammer. If I center that display, there's our working net targeted by the jammer. We're now going to enter the frequency hopping mode. In a frequency hopping net, one radio is nominated the hop master, the remainder hop slaves. The operator at the hop master, which would normally be at the senior headquarters, merely taps his hop button twice until he gets a big H display in his window. All the other radios, the hop slaves, produce a small H by hitting the hop control once. You can observe the radios entering the frequency hopping mode. Within a maximum of six seconds, the radio net is re-established. Even in the presence of this very strong jammer, the radio net is quickly re-established. If you listen, you will detect noise as the hopper jumps into channels which are occupied by the jammer, i.e. block channels. Once synchronization is achieved, over-over times will be immediate. The jamming signal at the moment is occupying some 1 megahertz at the peak of the wanted signal. If I increase the bandwidth of the jammer, I'm now interfering with some 2.5 megahertz, which equals about 40% of the subband in which the Jaguar is currently hopping. The Jaguar will synchronize and work well with interference levels beyond this. The Jaguars are currently hopping in a 6.4 MHz subband. The frequency band at VHF is split into nine such subbands. Use of the subbands provides excellent ECCM whilst allowing the bands to be reallocated to different nets by the frequency manager. This is particularly useful on rebroadcasted nets where different subbands can be used either side of the rebro. In the full band hopping mode, the radios hop across the full frequency range 30 to 88 MHz. In both cases, the radios automatically select 256 channels in which to hop. Alternately, 256 specific frequencies can be entered using the fill gun or programmer. In addition, the radios can be programmed to hop in all the available 2320 channels in the 30 to 88 MHz range. This is referred to as all channel hopping. The UHF bands are similar, except that there are three wide bands and 13 sub-bands in which to hop. No until Let's now widen the spectrum to 5 MHz per division. And if we move our net down to the end other end of the display, and reintroduce the jammer. If enemy activity becomes a problem, then we can again use the pre-programmed facilities of the radio, 
to move up the spectrum. In the next channel, we've moved right up to the 70 or 80 megahertz region, well away from the jamming signal. Again, there's a six second delay while initial synchronization takes place. Thereafter, over overtimes are immediate. This synchro synchronization will be maintained all of the time the net is working because not only is flood sync sent by the master station, but every transmission thereafter from the master or from any of the slaves or between slave stations on a radio net, individual transmissions contain packets of synchronization information. If the radios are put into a state of radio silence, then they will retain instant synchronization up to a period of four hours. Thereafter, synchronization time will be longer, but it, it will only take a maximum of six seconds to re-establish the radio net. If the enemy jamming activity becomes a problem again at the higher frequencies, we can use the pre-programming facilities of Jaguar to move into the full band frequency hopping mode. In the next channel, I've programmed the radios to operate over the full band 30 to 88 megahertz. Again, there's a six second delay while initial synchronization takes place. But now you'll detect that that jammer, which is some two and a half megahertz wide at the peak of the wanted signal, has little or no effect on the incoming signal. Regardless of where we put it into the spectrum. We have seen how the Jaguar can be programmed to hop in both sub and full bands. In addition, individual channels or blocks of channels can be barred from the Jaguar program. This may be useful in protecting friendly fixed channel nets such as those used for passing data traffic. In the subband mode, up to six different blocks may be barred. The barred bands can be several small bands or just one group, providing that no more than a total of 400 kilohertz is barred in each subband. In the full band mode, any number of frequencies can be barred within the six bands, provided the radio is left with a minimum of 256 channels over which to hop. In the next channel, I've programmed in two blocks of barred frequencies. If we store the information, we can see those blocks that are denied to the frequency hopper. In this way, you can protect friendly radio stations sending, for instance, pure data traffic. In locations such as a headquarters, where several radios on different nets may be co-located, they can be programmed to hop in the full band orthogonal hopping mode. This will avoid interference between the nets. When in this mode, the radio automatically splits the spectrum 30 to 88 MHz into small bands or subsets each 225 kHz wide. This gives nine channels per subset. Each of the eight radio channels, i.e. channel 0 or M, and channels 1 to 7 will use a different 25 kHz channel within each subset. If, for instance, set A on the diagram was a radio on channel 2 and occupied the indicated channel in the first subset, it would use different channels in other subsets within the frequency band. Similarly, if set B on the diagram was a radio on channel 6, it would use different channels within each subset which would always be different than those used by channel 2. In this way, if all eight radio channels hop into the same subset at the same time, they will occupy different 25 kilohertz channels.
In peacetime, the frequency programmer can limit the number of channels on which the Jaguar hops. In this next channel, I've programmed it just to use four of the available channels. And in the next channel, it's operating over a subset of 16 frequencies. In the demonstrations so far, synchronization has been automatic and rapid. The operators take no part at all other than to change channel and select the correct mode. Important points to notice about the Jaguar system of synchronization is that it needs no external input. No time of day is required. The Jaguar synchronized even in the presence of extremely strong jamming. And it's synchronized in the hopping mode. There was no single channel transmissions whatsoever. In the final channel, I'd like to demonstrate some of the ad additional features of Jaguar. To do this, I will use a caracal radio. The unique automatic synchronization systems allows radios that were not present at the setup of the net and missed the initial flood synchronization to join the net, the net later on. This is achieved by gathering the synchronization information which is passed between substations and from control to substations, or from hop master to hop slaves. With the caracal radio switched off, we'll establish the net on channel 7. As normal, there's a 6 second, approximate 6 second delay, whilst the radio net is established. We now have a frequency hopping radio net, which is up and running. Let's imagine that this caracal radio was being carried by a liaison officer who was crossing divisional boundaries and he needs to flick from one net to another. All he needs to do is to select the frequency hopping slave mode, select the channel on which he knows that this net is operating and switch his radio on. He will now passively receive synchronization information from all the stations on the net until he has received sufficient sync to allow him to join the net. He can now actively participate in that net and send and receive messages. Let's imagine a second scenario where this radio is being held by a forward observation officer. Perhaps that observation officer sees approaching enemy tanks and he has a need to urgently report it on this net which is already up and running. In this instance, even though this radio is unsynced and is a hop slave, he can take control of this radio net and pass his important message. I'll demonstrate that. If I switch the caracal radio on and I'm on the frequency that I know is being used by this radio net. If I now go to transmit, I will receive inhibit tones which tell me that the radio is not yet ready for me to transmit. During this period, it will send flood sync informa information out to the other radios and the data header will tell them that this is a friendly hop slave radio which does not have sync information but which is to join the net. Once the inhibit tone ceases, then the radio is joined the net and the operator can send his important traffic. Tanks in wood, tanks in wood. And if you look at the screen, you'll see that I'm in the transmit mode. What I will do is co to continue to transmit from this radio. Remember that the other radios were synchronized to one another before I interrupted. They have now adopted a new synchronization pattern and are now in a new hop sequence with this radio. I'm still transmitting and I'm therefore still in control of the radio net. 
As soon as I release my presser switch, the radios will instantly revert to their old synchronization system, will adopt the old hop sequence, and will continue as if they had not been interrupted. If I then leave this radio on the frequency, it will passively enter the net as before and become part of the net. To demonstrate this, I will put the sand-colored radio into the transmit mode. As soon as I release my presser switch with the caracal radio, this net reverts back to its original mode. And my caracal radio has now received sufficient synchronization to join the net as a passive late entry station. Fixed channel radios which do not have a hopping capability may also pass messages to a Jaguar hopping radio by calling the net on the hailing or reference frequency. This is the fixed frequency we saw displayed as radio channels were selected. When the Jaguar operator receives a fixed channel call on the hailing frequency, he hears a five second series of low frequency hailing tones. He may then select the fixed frequency clear mode in order to receive the incoming signals and talk back if he wishes. To avoid enemy spoofing or jamming, the hailing tone can only be activated every 40 seconds. An additional feature of Jaguar and Caracal is the provision of selective communication. Each radio is identified by an address or call sign. In the first example, call sign 0 communicates only with call sign 1 2. All other radios on the net are not party to the information being passed and will receive only unready pips or busy tones. In the second example, three stations have been grouped together by the allocation of call signs, all beginning with the digit 4. The operator at zero can now call these up as a group and in this way set up a private conference call within the net. This type of call could be used to carry out a commander's orders group over the air. In the third and final example, we should imagine that 3-4 has fallen into enemy hands. This station can be banned from the net without disrupting normal communications between other stations. The radio is now of no use to the enemy who will be unable to use it against you. During programming, each radio is allocated a call sign or address. For instance, the receive radio is allocated the address 20. The hop master is address 00, and the caracal radio is 09. On an established net, when the transmitting radio wishes to selectively call another member of the net, all he does is enter the selective calling mode, indicates the radio he wishes to speak to, which in this case will be 09, and at that point, the called radio receives the signal, but all the other radios on the net receive only busy terms. To ban a radio station from the net, let's imagine that the caracal radio has fallen into enemy hands. The transmit radio enters the selective mode and this time denies access to call sign 09. When he enters the transmit mode, all stations on the radio net will receive his messages, but the caracal will receive nothing at all, though to all appearances the radio is in perfect working order. That concludes the demonstration of Jaguar, and I've tried to show some of its many features. Subband, full band, and all channel hopping. Barred bands to aid frequency planning. 
frequency orthogonality requiring no internet synchronization. Simple operation. Inbuilt or add-on digital encryption. Data protection with interleaving. Automatic synchronization needing no time of day input or fixed channel transmissions. Selective calling and banning of lost or captured radios. A full range of equipment including Caracal, the world's first handheld military frequency hopping radio. Jaguar, the proven frequency hopping radio from Raycom.